It, it's at the um, top. Yeah, this was mailed March 30th, 2016. Okay. And can you please, essentially, what is this notice of a violation? What is the violation? Or no, what, what is this what, document? What, um, this is um, kind of a last resort for the city, typically. Um, after the city's worked with a, a property owner to seek remedy or voluntary compliance with a violation, um, kind of as a last resort, we filed the notice of violation, which then sets into place all of these other procedures. And it's my understanding under uh, subsection, or no. Um, so as you mentioned, it's the last, uh, I guess, effort. Be did you get voluntary compliance? No. Okay. And what are the violations identified in this notice of violation? It looks like there's only four. Yes, so uh, the description of violations, violation one states uh, Kenmore Municipal Code 1525.070 permit required. So it references land alteration language, um, again, for the grading and the, the um, retaining wall work. So essentially this was cited because Mr. Sharway didn't obtain a permit before work, is that correct? Correct. Okay, and how about the second one? Second one is a uh, violation of Kenmore Municipal Code 1530-200, um, which references... Um, yeah, I, I can read it. That's fine. Okay. And then how about the third violation? A uh, violation of Section 1530-600, stop work order, and unlawful continuance. So why would that have been identified? What... What occurred that you would have uh, cited him for this? Yeah, um, basically work continued after a stop work order was posted. Um, the work between May 27 of 2015 and um, August 25, 2015. Thank you. And then how about that last violation? It's a violation of Municipal Code 1525060 hazards. And I know that the code says, you know, we seek for voluntary compliance first, then you issue a notice violation when you don't get voluntary. But it also identifies corrective, again, corrective uh, actions. What would the corrective actions be to remedy these four uh, violations? And if you're asking the hearing examiner for corrective actions, what would they be? Um, they would be to um, have a professional engineer essentially prepare plans and a design to stabilize the hillside, construct the walls as, as necessary potentially, um, submit those permits to the city, so it would be in the form of a grading permit, a building permit, and a shoreline exemption request. Okay. Um, and then I see that there's penalties also identified. Where, are the penal where, where do the penalties come from? Uh, the penalties are in the Kenmore Municipal Code. Okay, and they're identified by the sections, correct? That's page C-9C. Yes. Okay. Um, I have no further questions. Tell me about the penalties. Did you calculate those? I did not. Are you aware of how the calculation was derived? And the reason for my inquiry, I'll expose that, is because it appears that you are considering all four as one violation. In other words, you didn't calculate based on each alleged violation to be an independent assessment of penalty. Is that correct? Yes, that's what it appears. Okay. Is that a deviation from past practices of the city? I'm not typically involved with assessing the okay. penalties. Okay, you're the wrong person to ask. All right. Okay, uh, that completes then Mr. Bauer's testimony. Uh, again, uh, Mr. Charway, if you want to ask any clarifying questions of Mr. Bauer, I want to give you that opportunity to do so, recognizing that if the hearing is reconvened, uh, you or your attorney would have further opportunity to cross-examine. Okay, can I ask a question, Mr. Examiner? So, can I 
by, uh, by asking the questions right now, is this violating the extension, or is this still? No, no, I want to give you okay. two opportunities. I want to make sure you have a full okay. understanding of what his testimony is. Thank you. Uh, now, I'm not familiar with you know, the hearing, and I have never been in one. So um, now, we can all, was, can we bring somebody else that, like, um, the sheriff, you know, from the fire department, is this something that I can always ask for to bring him back for questions or no? Well, I can give you that opportunity. Yeah. What I described at the outset of the hearing yeah. when you asked for a continuance is that we would allow the city to give okay. its information today. And I did that in an effort to fully inform you Thank of you. what the city's case might be well in advance of, of you having to provide any response. Now, you have that option. You're the one that can okay. decide uh, if you want to recall a witness or ask a witness questions today. I want to give you that opportunity to do so. This is not a case where you're required to have an attorney. Uh, it's not a situation where there'd be a constitutional requirement to provide you with an attorney. Mm -hmm. There is no criminal charge pending in this forum. This is just looking at civil penalties. Uh, thus far, the city has not indicated that it's considering any misdemeanor action, although they could do so under the code, but we've had no indication they're going to do that. Nor has the city indicated any uh, desire to pursue emergency orders, which they have the opportunity to do so under the code, but they've elected okay. not to do that, yeah. even though they find a threat to public health. So uh, I want to give you freedom Thank you. to decide how you'd like best to proceed. And if you want to ask Mr. Bauer questions, certainly. If you want to recall Mr. Laflame, he sure. stayed in the hearing room, certainly you can do that. Okay. Okay. What would you like to do I'd now? I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Andrew Bauer, a couple of questions. Good. Mr. Okay. Andrew, a couple of questions. Thank you so much for taking the time. Um, how many times have you seen me in the city's building? Um, Several times, I, I don't know. I don't have an exact number. But you, I believe you've seen me almost here every two, three days, right? Um, I, I wouldn't say that. Um, last year, I think it was August, around the time that the stop work orders were posted. Yeah. 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 Have you seen Have you seen me any time before August, or just August was the beginning? That's the first time you have seen me. I don't recall. You don't recall. Okay. Um, let me ask you a question. So the meeting, let's go back to the meeting. We met. Can you tell me where did we meet, me and you and Mike? Um, we met in the community meeting room, which is right next door to the council chambers here at City okay. Hall. How long do you think that meeting ended up taking? Um, as I recall, it was about a half hour, maybe 40 minutes. Do you believe? We were sitting in the room, or did we go to the front desk and came back to the room? The whole time we were sitting at the room having a meeting? Um, I think we may have started at the front desk and then moved to the meeting room. Okay, so the whole time we were at the meeting room, and then we, I walked out and left from the meeting room, and I went home, or I left the building, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me ask you a question. Um, going back to, I'm sorry, you know, please be patient with me. It's, uh, Going back to the exhibit where there is a witness list. Uh, let's see. Sorry. Here. Yeah, exhibit uh, C4. We'll start with a couple of things. First, you said that you printed out this page with the GeoTech uh, referrals because I did mentioned to you that it was very hard time for me to find the geotech yes. that's familiar with the hillside to be able to work with me and I'm trying very hard to get permits and to get geotech and to get engineer which I do have a geotech that worked with me before Mr. Ted Shepard from uh, Tierra Associates and going back to what happened before I never created a hazard for this hillside it was created by the city because I cannot go across the street and dig the street to be able to create uh, a protection for my house to be able to protect Mr. The Hearing Examiner, I'm just going to object us to the narration. Yeah, okay. and the way the 
procedure works and I'm has sorry. to work in this hearing room because of the yeah. ordinances that apply, yeah. you have an opportunity to ask Mr. Bauer questions yeah. about what he testified okay. about. Oh, but you see what you began to do, and the reason the city attorney objected is that you started telling me your story. Okay. And that's called testimony, and you can only do that if you're placed under oath Okay. And then you must tell the truth, or it's perjury if you don't tell the okay. truth. So we make a real clear line between asking questions of a witness to clarify what he said, and then once okay. you're done with that, if you choose to testify, then you're placed under oath, and then you must tell the truth. Okay. Because I'm you sorry. see the difference between the two? Yes, I'm sorry. So if you want to ask Mr. Bauer questions, uh, then you know you can do that now. Thank but you. No testimony. So. This page with the Geotech, you said that you gave me, you handed out that Geotech that day. I don't see how possible you went out and printed this from King County and you give it to me while we were in a room and we didn't leave the room. So the question is, this list from King County entitled Selecting a Geotechnical Consultant, Mr. Bauer testified that he gave this to you. Right. And I think on the August meeting date, and you're asking, is that really true, or how could yeah, that? Yeah, is it true that you gave it to me that day? So, as I recall, um, we we definitely gave you the city's permit application forms and i believe during the meeting as you were expressing your difficulty and getting an engineer um, i had referenced that we had this list to uh, reference and so i may not have given the geotech consultant list to you at the meeting but it was attached to the email as i recall okay the email so you, that's yeah. exhibit c4a okay so you did not give me the geotech uh, report uh, or referrals that day? Um, I gave it to you in the email that was sent that same day, that afternoon. Okay. I just want to make sure that on the record, because you did mention while we were talking uh, just a minute ago, uh, that you did give it to me, which that's not true. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Now, the next thing, um, the drawing I came in, you believe that this is the day also I give you that drawing? Um, I, yeah, I can't recall if you gave it to us that day or not. Okay, because you did mention also that you, I did. This, I gave this, uh, I came in and this was handed to Brian Hampson. This was never to you or Mike Thomas. Mike Thomas and yourself who were sitting in a room and was talking to you. Mr. Hearing Examiner, never... I'm going to object to the narration. Oh, yeah, you're, you're making a point okay. in your questions yeah. and that's fine to do. It goes to the credibility of the witness. Yeah. And you wanted to show that Mr. Bauer said he gave the geotech list to you, but he now says, I did not. I emailed it to you. Yes. And now secondly, uh, you asked, did you give the drawings to him? He said, yes, you did. On August 28th, you established that you did not. They went to Hampson. So that's it. Okay. That's questions, response. Okay. Testimony is different. Okay, so I'm sorry. Any more questions I'm for sorry. Mr. Bauer? Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, one last question. Have you ever been to the house? No. Uh, have I asked you to come to the house? Um, I believe that, that that first meeting you did, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I have no did further questions. Did the city have any redirect of your witness following the questions by Mr. Sharaway? I do not. Thank you, Mr. Bauer, for your presence here today and for your testimony. You are excused from the hearing room if you care to leave the hearing room. Did the city have any further witnesses this morning? We do, thank you. Uh, the city would ask Mr. R Raymond Fry, Fry to, this, uh, to testify. It's Mr. Raymond Fry? Correct. Okay. Mr. Fry, if you'd please come forward, take a seat oh, that'd be there great. where the you. witnesses are presenting information, and then we'll ask you to take the oath, and then you can begin your testimony. Do you swear to tell truth and testimony you give today? I do. Thank you. Please be seated. 
Thank you, Mr. Fry. Can you state your full name and spell the last one for the record? My name is Raymond Fry, F-R-E-Y. And what's your occupation? I'm a managing member of Halts and Fry, LLC, a land use consulting and entitlement firm located in Kirkland, Washington. Okay. And we have, uh, have you been here uh, for this morning's testimony? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And we have um, been, we've had testimony regarding a specific piece of property. Uh, the address is 15709 61st Avenue Northeast in Kenmar. Are you familiar with that property? Yes, ma'am, I am. It's located directly to the south of my client's property. And who is your client? My client is Dr. Ivy, Dr. Tom Ivy. Okay. And what is his address? Mr. <laughs> Dr. Ivy. I'll have to get it. Oh, that's fine. Please do. Dr. Ivey's <clears throat> residence is 15717, 61st Avenue Northeast. And is that adjacent to Mr. Sharaway's property? Yes. To it is directly to the north thank you. of Mr. Sharaway's property. And I believe you mentioned that Dr. Ivey is, you, uh, is your client. Um, why did he hire you? Dr. Ivey hired our firm to entitle a cable lift tram going from his house to the waterfront. Okay. And when you say entitled, can you explain that? Yes, it's do all the stuff you've just been hearing about, which is get permits, uh, shoreline substantial development permit, as well as uh, construction permits. And is that what you do uh, as a profession? That's what our firm does, yes. And how long have you been doing that? 29 years. Okay. And so Mr. Ivy hired you. How did you become familiar with the neighbor's property next door, Mr. Sharaway's property? Uh, I got a, <clears throat> I got a, we had a, a meeting at the city where we got our, uh, it was our, our pre-application hearing, and I went and I looked at the property after that. Mr. Ivey's property. Dr. Ivey's property. And then on um, August 26th, Dr. Ivey called me and said, could you go look at the property? Uh, there's all sorts of construction going on next door, and it's got my daughter concerned, and she was staying in the house at that time with her newborn baby. And did you go to Mr. Sharaway's property then? On August 26th, I went to Mr. Sharaway's property. Uh, actually, I went to Dr. Ivy's property, walked down, and uh, noticed considerable destruction of trees on Dr. Ivy's property, a lot of scraping of the land, and followed it all the way down to the waterfront and noticed the crew working. Okay, and so let me clarify. So you were on Dr. Ivy's property and you went down to the shoreline? Yes, I followed his path all the way down to the shoreline. Okay, and then you said you saw construction on whose property did you I saw see? construction, uh, a, a team of men uh, working uh, on doing various things, including uh, what looked like forms, construction of forms, um, it's hard to tell. I just was surprised to see so much going on there. Okay, and then I'm going to ask you to go to City's Exhibit C-10. Actually, no. And before I ask you questions on that, let me... I interrupted you. So you went down with Ms. Dr. Ivy's daughter, and you saw construction of what you have described as forms. Can you further describe that? I don't know what forms mean. Well, first of all, not with Dr. Ivy's daughter. Oh, okay. I went down alone. Oh, okay. okay. She remained in the house. I went down, and I saw debris, uh, wood, wooden forms, uh, construction debris in general, uh, burned it looked like burned trees and things like that. And the shocking thing to me was the entire site was totally denuded. It had been scraped clean. In 30 years I've been in this business, uh, I've never been able to obtain a permit to do that on a steep slope. And when you say denuded, can you explain further? Denuded scraped of what? Clean, of trees, of shrubs, 
It just was bare dirt. And this was in August, and I was very concerned because uh, it would, could have an impact on my client's property right next door. And you said you saw construction workers, or workers, if you will. Mm-hmm. What were they doing? Well, I can't tell you for sure, that, but they were working on the site. Okay. They were you know, it, involved in, in construction work on that site. How long were you out on Dr. Ivy's property? Not more than about 20, 30 minutes. I took photos, okay. and then I sent those photos to Dr. Ivy, and I sent those photos to Mike Thomas, the code enforcement officer also. Okay. And then did you... Tell anyone at the city, what, what did you do after you saw this? Well, I spoke to Mike Thomas uh, after I sent him those photos. I went in and I, I saw him, and uh, I would say that he said, I'm aware of what's going on, but I can't discuss it with you. And again, M- Mike Thomas was at the city at the time? Yes, he was the code enforcement officer during that time. Okay. And now I'll ask that you go to Exhibit C-10. Are you familiar with that photograph? It's C-10A. Yes, and, I've seen this. And how are you familiar with it? Well, this was taken by a member of the Ivy family. I believe it was uh, Dr. Ivy's wife, Mrs. Ivy. Her initials are MFI. Okay, and it says taken by MFI at the bottom of the photograph. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then, so did she give you this photograph? Dr. Ivy sent it to me. Okay. And what does it depict? Well, it depicts a lot of what I saw. Um, uh, just construction, ongoing construction, uh, a lot of debris. And as you'll notice, when I said denuding of the, uh, the, the site, uh, it, it's just as if it's been scraped clean of all uh, brush and, and, and trees. And it also says June 2015. Do you know if that's when uh, Mrs. or Dr. Ivy, she's also a doctor, when she took it? Well, yes. Uh, they were aware that there was a, I guess, a, some kind of code violation going on, but they don't know anything about that stuff. They just hope there was. And uh, this is, she took this and it points out the cedar trees and some of the debris that I mentioned. Okay. Can you go to the next photograph in 10CB? Yes. And what does that depict? Well, it's just, uh, it, it still is shocking to me. I've never seen anything like this. If you look, you'll see a wall, a white wall, almost vertical coming down. And I, had, I also had the doctor survey his property so we could actually locate where all of this construction was going on. So let me stop you first Mm -hmm. uh, before we go further. So you just said a white wall going down. Can you please identify which wall you're talking about? uh, By the way, you see those forms, those wooden forms? Those are what I was referring to before when you mentioned. See those vertical forms forms that they pour concrete behind? So the retaining wall. If you go to the left of that top wall, you'll see a white wall going up the property there. Okay. And that also is located on the Ivy's property, according to the survey that was done. As well as, if you look at the bottom left of that picture, you'll see a white post at the bottom left. That is the marker for the Ivy's property. So you can see there's quite a bit of construction that's gone on 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 their property. And it appears to, the words taken by TDI are there, who is TDI? That's Tom Ivy, Dr. Ivy. And then the... And you'll also notice he points out the cedar trees are gone. And that Those were those big trees you saw in the previous picture. And what's the date for that photograph? November 2015. And then how about the next photograph, 10C? Yeah. I think this uh, goes to your line of testimony uh, earlier about the property line. Yes, Is that ma'am. correct? There is the stake at, at the bottom that is pointed out, and he has drawn, basically drawn a, a, a pencil or pen line up to an X at the top, which shows where the other marker is that depicts his property line. So there's quite a bit of encroachment. So when you went out to the property, I think you said late August, mm-hmm. may have been August 26th, 
Uh, again, were these the forms that you saw at, at that time? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And then let's go to the next photograph. It is C10D as in dog. Yes, ma'am, I'm familiar with it. What is this? This is located, uh, and I had them locate Could, this on the- When you say this, I apologize. Can you yeah, describe sorry, what's depicted? I'm the structure that you see, which is a seat, mm -hmm. used to be in the trees. I don't understand when you say it's well, been in the trees. It's a nice place to sit with trees around it, or okay. it was. You can look now and you can see that it's, it's just uh, like, like it's been scraped clean. This, um, and, and above it you'll see this whole line of timbers uh, to the left of the seat. You can see that. And this is at the end of a meandering path that goes down from Dr. Ivy's house, stops there, goes, comes down, walks, and then comes back down and is the path that we use to get to the lake. And the tram that we are entitling for that, or have entitled, we have a building permit for it, would basically eliminate that path just going straight down to the lake itself. That's why they did it. The Ivies are in their 70s, so they want to be able to access the beach easier. So this structure, the seat, yeah, um, and then the hillside that goes up to mm -hmm. the left, is that Mr. Sharway's property or Dr. Ivy's property? It's Mr. Sharway's okay. property. Okay, and it, it appears fairly steep. Uh, yes. Does it to you? Okay. Well, you, you're probably going to look at C11 X, right? That is correct. Can we uh, go to the next photograph, 10 E? Yeah. And what is that? Well, that's. Oh, is that the wall you were mentioning? That okay. was a wall that was constructed of, and is also partially located on the Ivy's property. And you'll notice the, the, uh, Dr. Ivy points out the erosion already taken place on his property from this wall that's been constructed. And this part is on his property. And then it says dated, is TDI again Mr. Ivy's initials? Yes, ma'am. And the date? November. 2015. Okay. And then that is it. Do you have anything that you'd like to uh, further explain to the hearing examiner and why you're here today? Dr. Ivy could not attend this meeting. Uh, he's somewhere in between where he, where he operates in Cincinnati and uh, Ketchum, Idaho. I believe he's trying to get some vacation in. He will be moving here in a matter of months when his house is remodeled. And he asked me to sit in for him today. Thank you. And I want to make sure I understand, you, you visited the site when, his property when? I thought I, you said August. Yes, sir. I, I visited the property August 26th and numerous times after that. In 20, 2015? 2015, yes, sir. And the testimony was that this is what he observed when you visited. This is, well, the photos that were shown to me were Dr. Ivy's photos, uh -huh. but I, I went down to the beach myself okay. and observed that same thing and also took photos and forwarded them to the city. Okay. So even though some of the photos have a November 2015 yes. date, your testimony is, is that looked the same as it does in the photo, even though you were there Very much months. the same. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. And I have no further questions. May I ask oh. one other thing? We Please. do have a survey that was done on the property that I can provide. It shows the location. We did it on purpose to show the location of the wall. Mm -hmm. Well, that could be helpful in some other context. I don't believe the city is alleging a violation of encroachment or intrusion upon another's property. We are not. Okay. Um, and we were made aware of the survey uh, just recently. Um, but again, I, I do want to clarify, and thank you, Mr. Hearing Examiner. So the initial testimony was uh, of yours was when you were actually out there, correct? Yes, ma'am. And then the latter part of the testimony was describing the photographs that were then taken by others, Mr. Uh, Dr. Ivy uh, and his wife, correct? Yes. Thank you. No further questions. He came, he came back and visited his property during that time. Thank you. Stay, stay there for a moment because... Yes. I want to give Mr. Sharway an opportunity to ask any clarifying questions of, of Raymond Fry. And Mr. Fry, also, I wanted to make sure I, I refer to you properly. Are you a land use consultant? Yes, Is that sir. The proper? Okay. 
and not offered as an expert witness, but Ms. Rotan only for the purpose of identifying photos, is that correct? Um, not just identifying the photographs, but his personal experience uh, on the property, watching the workers on Mr. Sharway's pro property. Okay. Thank you. So, Mr. Sharway, you have any clarifying questions? Yes, Mr. Fry. Uh, thank you, Mr. Raymond, for coming to the meeting. We appreciate your time. A um, couple of questions. So, you've been on a property in November, you mentioned, right? And you have been going to the property and checking out the property and the progress of the tram work and everything going on? Is that right? There was no construction on tram at that time. I visited the property numerous times uh -huh. to ascertain the location of the tram. Okay. Okay, and um, I believe also, um, well, I guess that question for later, but let me ask you a question. Uh, when you were uh, at the property in November, did you see any construction workers or anybody working on the property? Why are you asking me about November? While you were there? I said November. August 26th is the day that I was speaking about. When yes, you sir. were there on August 26th, did you see workers on the yes, property? Yes, sir. You, November, you seen workers in November? I think I can help. That's the question okay. I was asking. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Because I, too, was confused, and I believe your Exhibit C-10, it has photographs with a number of dates, right. and some are taken after uh -huh. Mr. Fry visited the property. Right. And that was very confusing to me, and some are taken in November. But Mr. Fry's testimony is that, yes, that photo taken in November it looked that same way when I visited in August. Okay. Okay. All right. The next question I have, if you can please go to exhibit um, C10 and last page, uh, C10E. That's the one that says soil erosion yes, of ground cover on Fry property, TDI November 2015. So um, you mentioned erosion to the hillside. Is that right? Yes. Um, now, this wall, I believe, where you're standing and taking the picture, it was all the way up almost to the house, right? Uh, not almost to the house, but up two-thirds of the way. Okay, and it looked like there was erosion coming from underneath. It's pointed out on the picture. Yes, sir. I just want to clarify it. Underneath, right? Next to, underneath, in the vicinity. Okay. Next to the wall also, there is uh, railroad ties, right? Yes. Does this look like this railroad ties, something gets moved, or is it eroded and the hillside is moving, and that's why all the railroad, since you're expert? Can you please tell me? It just looks like a mess to me. Okay, but it doesn't look like, like it's being moved. It's just uh, maybe pressure, water pressure, a hillside erosion from the top? Well, if based on my experience, I would say that this hillside has suffered a lot of erosion. There's movement, ties moving, uh, soil moving. Typically what happens when you scrape off the undergrowth Okay, so, um, yeah. Okay, well, thank you so much. I really appreciate your answer. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Fry, for being here and answering the questions. Yes, sir. And, uh, you're free to go if you'd like. Any further witnesses by the city? Yes, thank you. Uh, one last uh, witness, Mr. Brian uh, Hampson, please. I'm sorry, Mr. Brian Hansen is not on the witness list. Oh, I believe he is. Is no, he not? not? Oh, if he's no. not. Yeah. So. Oh, you're uh, right. I apologize. I withdraw that. I thought he was. Okay. Can I call Mr. Mike Thomas to the witness? Mr. Mike Thomas? I believe everybody's here, right? No, Mr. Thomas is not here. Oh, if you want to list him. Well. Okay, so he's not here. How about Eric Anderson? Is he here? But let's, he, let's take this more slowly. Okay. So I want to make sure the record reflects the city called Mr. Hampson but did not list him as a witness. Yeah. You objected to that, and then the city withdrew him. Thank you. Now, uh, you are proceeding with the case, 
and asking that Mr. Mike Thomas, who I believe is the code enforcement officer for the city? He was at the time. He has a different job right now. Okay, he's no longer with the city. Correct. Um, and so you want to you want to call your own witnesses? Is that what you'd like to do, Mr. Sharway? Um, yes, please. I would like to call uh, Mr. Uh, Bill Chang. Okay. Um, be prior to um, appellant's case or witnesses, could I clarify the process? So I understand there's a request for continuance. So if Mr. Sharway has questions of these individuals now, they'll also, if the continuance is granted, be a, a, available at a different date, correct? I, I'm asking, uh, will, will they be brought forward to that second date? Or maybe this would be the ideal time to address the request for continuance. I'm giving him that option. As I stated previously, Mr. Sharway has that option of uh, obtaining as much information as he'd like to during the course of this hearing Oh, he's proceeding without legal counsel. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think presence of legal counsel is a required due process element. Uh, certainly in this type of proceeding, an appellant can proceed with or without legal counsel. So I wanted to give him that opportunity to, first of all, ask clarifying questions in cross-examination of the city witnesses. And now, and I thank you for giving us pause, because now Mr. Sharway indicates he would like to call some witnesses here today. Am I correct? And, and the witness you identified is? I asked for Mike Thomas, and I understand he's, not, uh, he's no longer with the city. I asked for Eric Anderson. He's on the witness list also. And he's unavailable. He's unavailable, okay. Well, so, let, now these, are these ones that were identified on your witness list? Yes, sir. Because I'm, I'm looking at that witness list. I see yourself. I see. Oh, this is the city's witness list. Correct. I okay. Thank you. Now I, I do have that. I was looking at your own witness list. So has the city elected not to call those witnesses? Um, that's correct for our, our for our case. We, we were, however, going to reserve for rebuttal, and that's, again, the question about process, is Mr. Sharaway, I understand, will be having ample opportunity to bring forward, well, first question, the people we've had testify, but then also we'll be asking questions of the witnesses he has today, and then potentially bringing forth the same individuals and additional people, and we were going to request the opportunity for rebuttal, uh, understanding that there are two opportunities to go forward in this case. So the city didn't want to close its case, co close its case right now uh, because of rebuttal. Well, depending upon who Mr. Sharway would choose exactly. to call. Exactly. And that's where we are right now. We're looking at who, who he cho might choose to call okay. as a witness. Th that is a bit concerning that ones the city listed as witnesses aren't available. And is that one you mentioned, Mr. Thomas, no longer is employed by the city. And the other is not available because why? I do not know. Just made unavailable. Okay. And I, I'm looking for where in the city code, I believe there is some discussion in the city ordinances about presentation of witnesses. Do you recall where that might be? I, do, I don't offhand. I can look for it. Well, I think it's important we find that because this is an opportunity for Mr. Charway to call witnesses. I see it now. It's in Section 12150, the procedure at a contested hearing. And this, this again, this is what your city council, the city council of Kenmore, has adopted to govern this type of hearing, I'm, to, to I'm regulate sorry. it. 120 what? 150. And 150 subsection B reads as follows, quote, the parties are responsible for securing the appearance 
of any witnesses they wish to call. Neither the city nor the hearing examiner shall have the burden of securing any witnesses on behalf of the person who is contesting the violation or seeking to mitigate the penalties, end quote. This again is a, I would say, somewhat peculiar to the city of Kenmore. You're under a code here in the city of Kenmore about code enforcement that differs from anywhere else I work. And this does not give me any power to subpoena a witness, and it doesn't require any witness to attend. It puts the obligation on you and on the city. Um, it, it's a little bit unbalanced. The city obviously usually calls employees that are often frequently available and are in this room today. For you to call a witness that the city chooses not to bring forward, it's a difficult position to be in. But that's, that's what you've done, and we've heard that the two witnesses that you'd like to examine, the city has chosen not to make available. I don't believe that's an accurate statement. It's not that this- clarify for me. Of course, I don't think the city had a choice in not making them unavailable. Witnesses notified the city that they were unavailable. Okay. So in, in consistent- So what you're saying is you're in a similar position. You did identify them as witnesses. Correct. But you didn't secure their presence. We thought we did, but when an individual says they're not attending, that's really not the city's choice. Um, and that's and I, the, isn't that what I referred to in the ordinance? Correct. That's exactly. I, I think I also to. that to the extent that the appellants have an additional day, um, they could in fact secure Mr. Thomas or uh, Mr. Erickson's I think that's right, uh, presence. But no, the city was uh, unsuccessful in that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you heard that, Mr. Charway. Yes, you know, sir. everyone has that same challenge of how do you get a witness to this hearing yes, when sir. there isn't any subpoena authority. Mm -hmm. And a subpoena is something where you're required to attend or there can be uh, sanctions, penalties, or whatnot. Yes. And in this city, that does not apply. So, is it only the city of Kenmore that works that way? Well, so, it's, it's, uh, it's, in my experience, it's unique yes, here, sir. but there may be other jurisdictions that have a similar process. Yeah. In any event, that's what controls. Right. And I don't have any authority to override okay. that. Yeah. But you may have, is there anyone else that you wanted to have as a witness today? Actually, um, I, I decided not to call my witness today, neither one of my witnesses. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very sorry. I, I mean, I believe that in the beginning of the meeting, I thought I was going to have the city have all the witnesses here, and we asked that question. But it's, it's very strange that all of a sudden they disappeared. I'm well, sorry. that's and that's the way the city code works. Uh, is there any way that Mr. Sharway could contact Mr. Thomas? Do we know where he might be? Um, he is now employed by King County. I am sure we can provide contact information to Mr. Sharway. Uh, that's not hard at all. We can do that. Um, again, it was. He's at a different job right now, yeah. and I was no, I told his attendance when he wouldn't be here. Um, could I take one minute about the code and the subpoena power? I thought I read something about that. If, if you will give me a minute. Oh, certainly. Thank you very much. So in 1930, 190 of the code, under the rules and conduct of the hearing, um, it talks about adopting rules of conduct. It also does give the hearing examiner the power to issue summons and subpoena to compel the appearance of a witness. Um, so to the extent that Mr. Sharaway is unable to secure for his calling of these witnesses, you do have the authority under and different When was section. that chapter adopted by the council? Um, it says Ordinance 11, uh, so that usually means 2011. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, chapter? 1930-190. Mm -hmm. And chapter 120-150, which seems to conflict with that, it was also adopted in 2011. And, and that makes sense only in that typically when code enforcement updates, they're done at the same time. So it might have been in the same ordinance. Well, that, that's certainly peculiar because 
as I read mm. subsection B, it speaks directly to securing the appearance of a witness. Can you reference again your, your section? It is subsection 19.30.190. And how does it read? The first paragraph, um, I'm sorry, the third sentence uh, of the first paragraph says, the hearing examiner shall have the power to issue summons and subpoena to compel the appearance of witnesses and production of documents and materials to order discovery and to administer oaths and preserve order. I believe uh, that 120 does in fact I don't remember the specific section reference conduct of hearings 1930, and that's what directed me to this, not the specific subsection. Well, it does, it and does. here's the challenge, and I don't know if we need to make a ruling on it today, but the challenge is that 1930, that chapter is a general chapter applying to <clears throat> hearing examiner me. hearings, correct? And chapter 120, apparently adopted at or about the same time, specifically refers to code enforcement. So it, it would be my interpretation that for whatever reason, the city council decided, well, we're going to have general rules for hearings before the hearing examiner and give power to subpoena and power to order discovery. But when it comes to code enforcement, in this chapter, which is specific to code enforcement, and therefore I think likely governs code enforcement proceedings, even though you are correct, the lead sentence to, to 120.150 says, shall conduct a hearing to contest the violation pursuant to chapter 1930, when such hearing is properly and timely requested. However, that subsection B is so specific as to the parties being responsible for securing the appearance of witness. Understood. Yeah. And, and we're happy also, like I said, to try and assist uh, Mr. Sharway in obtaining um, Mr. Thomas's appearance if possible. Mm -hmm. And that, that's really the best way to go about it. I think it. so. You know, we don't want to get too caught up in legalities of who's right, here's wrong. So we're very appreciative that the city attorney is offering to help you have witnesses present that can speak to uh, your case. Well, specifically, Mr. Thomas. Mr. I Thomas. I don't know. Are there are there others? Yes, sir. Uh, it was Eric Anderson. He's actually uh, engineer for the city that uh, attended the property. He looked at the property with Mike Thomas. Eric Anderson. Mr. Is, Anderson. Mr. Anderson. I can also contact him. Um, again, of course, it depends on the date and availability. Yeah. So um, let's look at that now. Uh, you've requested a continuance to a, another date in order to provide yes. your uh, case, your response to what the city has presented today. And then the city attorney has asked that they be allowed to examine your witnesses and perhaps present what's called a rebuttal witness. So the effort here may be possible, may not be, but we're going to make the effort, is to find a date that works for you, Mr. Sharway, for the city, and for two witnesses that the city placed on its witness list, Mr. Mike Thomas and Mr. Eric Anderson. Uh, it might be a challenge to find that date, but we can begin to look for one. If you have any suggestions of how we go about that, I'm open to that. A start off date. I know that Miss Claudia Newman and I have had uh, contact about a potential date um, prior to this date, and it was August 3rd, which is a Wednesday. The only caught, and I am available, I believe this room was available because I, I, I looked into that. Mm -hmm. um, my concern, of course, is I don't know if Mr. Thomas and Mr. Anderson are, but I can immediately tell the hearing examiner and Mr. Sharway if they are not. Mm -hmm. But at least a tentative date, Mrs. Newman, in fact, said she was available that date. So I know his, his attorney oh, would. Yeah, I'm okay with that. August 3rd? Okay. And I believe that's a Wednesday. Is that correct? If it's not, then I don't know. I'd like to look at my calendar. And it I is a have, Wednesday. I have a, another issue okay. with the city that I need to address Understood. Which as far as uh, a contract. So we have some Understood. issues that are Procedure. clouds over that. So why don't we take a pause in the hearing record and we can just stop that record now so that we can discuss available date. Continued until that date at 10 a.m. And we'd begin by allowing 
any additional cross-examination of city witnesses and then okay. calling of appellate witnesses. And um, then if you choose to present any rebuttal witnesses. Okay, and that does, and so uh, cross. Not, I don't know if we're on the record Oops. yet. Are we? <laughs> <laughs> and I want to thank Tello for providing the service that she provides. She's done a really an incredible job, and it's been a pleasure to work with you. Uh, we, off the record, had decided that this hearing should be continued until August 3rd, 2016, at 10 a.m. in this hearing room, at which time the appellant, Mr. Charway, with presence of legal counsel that he expects to have present at that time, can have his legal counsel cross-examine the city witnesses that presented information today. And then we'll have an opportunity to call the uh, three witnesses that were identified by the appellant in his witness list. And that would include Mr. Gray, yourself, Mr. Charway, and then a William Chang. Um, in addition, the city has cooperatively stated they will help provide uh, witnesses that uh, were on their witness list that are not here today, but would try to make them available on August 3rd. And those in particular are two witnesses, Mr. Mike Thomas and uh, Mr. Erickson. Consulting, I believe, consulting geotech engineer then to the city? That's correct. Okay. So we hope to secure those witnesses for you. Um, I don't know, do you have subpoena power? Can you call them? I'll call them. You'll call them. I'll the call city attorney them. has certain persuasive powers. I think the that, city's uh, more persuasive than I am. We're confident, though, that they can be present. We, we will do our best efforts. And I want to encourage, too, Mr. Charway, that you or your attorney, uh, it's certainly appropriate and often very helpful to contact the other party's witnesses in advance of the hearing and to determine what Mr. Erickson or Mr. Thomas might say. That can help, too, in the hearing on August 3rd. And also, along those same lines, uh, it sounds like uh, Ms. Ritan and Ms. Newman have been in contact with each other. And if you find a way to resolve the case without me having to make a decision, that is certainly to be encouraged. I want you to understand that in this jurisdiction, a contested case hearing is for me to decide if the city's presented sufficient evidence to prove the allegations that are in the notice of violation. Uh, if so, there is no authority for any mitigation. If so, if the city's found to prove that the uh, alleged violations have occurred, then it is obligatory. I have no choice but to impose fines and penalties. So the authority is really quite uh, restricted for the hearing examiner here. Um, you have other uh, courses you can choose. There's something called mitigation. You still have the opportunity to pursue that. So that's something that your attorney might want to interact with the city attorney and find ways to resolve uh, without me writing a formal decision. Does that all make sense to you, Mr. Charway? Yes, thank you. Okay. And anything further that you wanted to bring up or discuss before we adjourn for the day? Yes, thank okay. you. Ms. Don Rattan, do you have anything you'd like to bring up before we adjourn for the day? Yes, thank you very much. The last thing I would have is that at the earlier onset when we were discussing the continuance, the hearing examiner uh, referenced that the city would transcribe these proceedings at its own cost. Uh, my request is that we have these audios available, audio transcript available, uh, I'm sorry, the audio tapes available. It's also visual. It's not just listening. They can watch the, the hearing. Is that correct? I had no idea. Uh, the tape is vi visual, correct? Yes. I'm actually recording both ways. Um, the camera's shorted out in the middle around the hour mark, so, so I have the 
the only the audio of during that like five minute time. I see. Well, that's good to know. So if we can I have Miss Newman before. rely on that rather than Certainly. the expense of a transcript. You understand? It's it's not to transcribe in writing. And really, that's what I meant to reference earlier, is to make it available to your attorney. And I think that's almost instantaneous, so you can have that available. Right. Something we can ask for today or when we can get it? Well, I, And usually, you there are a link online. I can go online and look at them. But I'm going to defer to Tila, who's the expert on that question. Um, did you want to request a CD or? Yeah, CD would be good. OK. Yeah, I can have that to okay, you today. Thank you. Thank you. Good. So you, you'll have that uh, this week, Yeah, that's uh, maybe good. even today. Yeah. That's good. yeah okay. And again, Tila has been very, very cooperative and easy to work okay. with. So I think you'll thank find you. the same you. as you work with her. And that was it. All right. Well, then uh, it's noon. I promised we'd be done at lunchtime. So we are now adjourned for the day to reconvene on August 3rd. Thank you very much. Thank you, so Thank you Mr. Sherwin.